a lot of my JavaScript work is done developing or maintaining online courses for training purposes. In these courses, it is very common to track time. As an example, we will track the amount of time spent in the training, and we may track how long it takes to answer a question. So in this JavaScript problem, we're going to take a look at how to track elapsed time. To do this, we use the date object. Now, I've done some other tutorials on the date object that I will include links to in the description section of this video. Before we look at a simple implementation to track time, I want to point out some interesting anomalies with the date object. We can take advantage of these anomalies to track time. So I'm going to open the console to show this. First, I'm going to create a start date variable. And I'm just going to add the current date to it using new and the date constructor. All right, now I'll create a second one. This is going to be the end date. So a little bit of time has passed, maybe 10 seconds. Now we have two variables that contain date information. Now, look what happens if we add these two together. Basically what it does is it prints out the data information and then just concatenates those two together. So the two strings representing the date get concatenated together. Now something interesting is what happens when we subtract them. And this is what we want to take advantage of. So basically what it does is it subtracts the total number of milliseconds in start date from the total number of milliseconds in end date. And that tells us how many seconds it's been, well, technically how many milliseconds it's been since the start date was created and the end date. Now, if you struggle with remembering which to subtract from which, think of it this way. The date object stores the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. So the later the date is, the higher the number. And so end date is going to be the higher number. And so we subtract start date from end date to get the total number of milliseconds. And so really that's 11.197 seconds. That's how long it took between the creation of those two variables. Now, if you happen to do it the wrong way, it's really easy to tell. Obviously, you get a negative number and then you know it's not exactly right. So we can take advantage of this to determine the number of milliseconds between two dates. We don't have to use one of the methods of the date object to get the milliseconds first. We can just immediately subtract the dates. So using that little technique, here's a simple solution that shows how we would compute elapsed time. So here I've added an event listener to the document and I'm just checking for the DOM content loaded. So that, that basically tells me when the HTML page is loaded. That's when I can start using JavaScript on the DOM. And what I do is I call an init function. Up here is my init function. So initially I do two things. I find a button. So the reason I'm finding a button is this is the page. We're going to use an example. I'm finding this button here so I can attach an event to it. And then I'm recording the start time. I simply use new date to accomplish that. And here's where I add the event listener. So when the button is clicked, basically I get the number of milliseconds. The way I do that is I create a new date and I subtract the start time. That gives me the number of milliseconds and I simply log to the console, milliseconds divided by a thousand. So really simple implementation, but it shows you how we can track elapsed time. So this is a technique I use frequently when tracking elapsed time for the different cases which I need it in the online courses which I develop. All right, jumping back to this page, I'm going to refresh it to start the time all over again. And now I will open the console first, then I will click the button. And we can see that almost eight and a half seconds passed since the time that I 
open the page and click the button. If I click the button again, you can see the time is increasing. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you would like to further add to your JavaScript skills, you can do one of the following. Click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. And finally, if you'd like to visit the All Things JavaScript website for full courses and a complete list of all the tutorials we've published, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.